All right, here's the second FRQ. And as usual, if there's any corrections I'm gonna make, uh, I'll put it in the description below or in a pinned comment. So let f and g be the functions defined by this. Okay, so which is which? And this is still a calculator question, by the way. Uh, this is this is definitely my ln function, right? I always like to label them. And then this one here is my g of x, which is x to the fourth plus two x cubed. The graphs f and g are shown. Find the area enclosed by the graphs f of g. So I need to find, so I'm always, I always try to teach you guys this by doing a representative rectangle. Okay, that would be the height of the rectangle. Uh, the height of the rectangle is f of x minus g of x. So I want to integrate from f of x minus g of x. Now I need to figure out the bounds here. The bounds occur when they're equal to each other. And so I'm going to have to plot that. So let's clear that out. Let's make this ln, uh, ln of x plus 3. And then this is x to the fourth plus 2x cubed. Okay, and let's window this because we want to find it. Let's go from, uh, like they did it from negative 2 to about 1. So negative, we'll say negative 3 to 3. Negative 3 to 3. And then, um, I don't know, they're going to negative 2 to 2. Okay. Oh, there's something wrong with my window range. Negative 3 to 3. Oops, x min, negative 2 to 2. Like that, okay, all right, cool. I wanna just get a nice picture of that. And then let's confirm the intersection points. I think negative two is right. Negative two is probably here. So this one's probably negative two. And then the second one, we gotta calculate the intersection. So we'll do the intersection between these two curves and guess, just put it somewhere close. You don't have to be that exact. Just don't want to be too far. And then 0.78197. So we're gonna integrate that. And so we're gonna do math nine from negative two to 0.78197 of y1 minus y2. Yeah, y1 minus y2. You always do top minus bottom when you're finding area, right? y1 minus y2, integrate that over x, I will get 3.604. Okay, so that's the area there. For negative 2, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b, let h of x be the vertical distance between the graphs f and g. Is h increasing? So what is the vertical distance between the graphs f and g? It's always top minus bottom. So h of x is equal to f of x minus g of x. And then they're asking if is h increasing or decreasing? That means I want to know if h of negative 0.5, the derivative of the thing that I want to try to find if it's increasing or decreasing. I'll take the derivative of that and decide if it's positive or negative, right? So we're going to do uh, fn deriv, so math 8, dy dx of, oh, does this work? y varies y1 minus y2. Right over negative 0.5. Okay. And I get negative 0.6. That is less than zero, so it is decreasing. Decreasing because h prime of negative 0.5 is less than zero. Boom. Okay. The region enclosed by the graphs f and g is the base of a solid. Cross sections of solid taken perpendicular x axis are squares. Find the volume of the solid. So when you're doing volumes, you're always doing the area times the thickness. In this case, the area is going to be the height of my rectangle just squared. Because when I draw this, like when I draw this rectangle, right, it's going to be the base of a solid here. This side is f of x minus g of x. It's going to make a kind of a square shape here, right? And the area is just, you know, this is h of x by h of x, right? So h of x squared. The h of x is just f of x minus g of x. Again, over the same bounds that we found in part a, which was negative 2 to 0 0.78197. Uh, so I'm just going to go back up to here and modify this guy. I'm going to see if I can put a square right here. So I'm going to insert square. Oops, shoot. I 
I think I need to put a parentheses when I do this because that one of those parentheses is already like part of the yeah like that okay cool so I get 5.340 okay vertical line of the xy plane travels from left to right along the base of a solid described okay vertical line travels from left to right along the base of the solid described in part c the vertical line is moving at a constant rate of seven units per second Find the rate of change of the area of the cross section above the vertical line with respect to the time when the vertical line is, okay, so this is kind of weird explain, but they're saying that you have a vertical line here. Let me grab a picture of this graph again. Well, no. So you have a vertical line, it's traveling at a certain rate here, and they're asking you, what is the rate of change of the area? So they're asking you, what is the rate of change of the area of the cross section? So the area of the cross section is A, which is just equal to F of X, minus g of x squared, right? And um, the, they're, they're, they're telling you, what, what, what do you know is you know that dx dt, you know the rate of change of x is seven, okay? And you're asked to find dA dt. That's what you're asking. What is the rate of dA dt here? So I have an equation that relates a and x, so I'm gonna take the derivative of this. So dA of both sides, dA dt, would be by power rule two times f of x minus g of x. And then by chain rule, the derivative of this, which would be f prime of x minus g of prime of x. And then by chain rule again, there's a dx dt that pops out because I got to do the derivative of x. Because I, I did the power rule on the outside, chain rule derivative of that guy, then chain rule again times dx dt. And that's what I want to find. So I want to do two, and then I want to evaluate this when x is equal to negative 0.5. So it's going to be two times f of negative 0.5 minus g of negative 0.5 times f prime at negative 0.5 minus g prime of negative 0.5 times dx dt, which is seven. So I just have to put all this into my calculator. Okay, so I would do this as vers. And you can do this just as a trick. This is gonna, my y1 is my f, so that's negative 0.5. This is a, that, it will treat it like a function evaluation. Minus that, the value of the function there. Then times the derivative. Of, let's see, there's function y1. Maybe I already calculated all these. I've done some of these already, but I'm just going to retype it in everything. Oops, I shouldn't have put that closing parentheses. So I'm doing the derivative at negative 0.5. Oops. Shoot. And then I multiply all that by 7. So I get negative 9.272. And that is in units squared per second. Because they gave you units, they said units per second, so I'm gonna say square units per second.